Okay, so we are going to talk about 4.5, which is writing the quadratic equation given a graph or information about the graph. So we're going to review the three different types, um, and then you'll get to select which version that you use. And some will be more user-friendly than others, depending on the information in the graph. So standard form as a review means that you have typically three terms, ax squared plus bx plus c. So if you um, are given the vertex and you're given a point that's on the graph, you can use this form to simplify, okay? Intercept form, what you need are the roots or where it crosses the x-axis, which are the x-intercepts. Um, and they have to be clearly defined like three or four. If it's between two numbers, you're not gonna be able to use intercept form. And then um, another point, okay? So you do need two pieces of information for this as well. So remember, if the roots are B and C, it's always X minus the root number. So it's the opposite sign in the factor. Okay. And then vertex form. This has to do if you know what the vertex is. Um, H, remember, is the opposite of the X value of the vertex. And K is the same as the y value of the vertex, okay? And then you'll just need one other point on the graph. So notice for all three versions, you need to have another clearly defined point on the parabola in order to find the entire equation, okay? Um, so let's look at our graph. And I know we are given the roots, which is negative five and three, they tell you the ordered pairs. We're given a point zero, negative 30, and we're given another point, negative 132, which also happens to be the vertex. So on this problem, we're actually given two additional points. So you can use either one, okay? So we've got the three different versions, and I'm not gonna do these in order. Because we have the roots, I'm gonna actually do the intercept form first, okay? So that's right up here. So we get y equals, a we don't know, remember that had to do with a vertical compression or stretch, but we do know our roots. So remember, we're gonna do the opposite. So one of the roots is negative five. So in the factor, it's gonna be x plus five. And the other root is positive three, so the factor is gonna be x minus three, okay? And we're okay to leave these with parentheses. We don't wanna get rid of the parentheses, but we do need to find a. So the way you find A is you're going to use one of these two other points to substitute for X and Y. Zero is my favorite number, so I'm going to pick this point. So X is zero and Y is negative 30, and that's what we're going to substitute. So substitute the X and the Y. So Y was negative 30 from our point. We don't know A, but X is zero. So now we have everything found except A. So now we can solve for A. On the right side, you'll type this into a calculator and you get negative, you get A times negative 15. The negative 30, we need to bring down. Since those are being multiplied and we wanna solve, we'll divide by negative 15 on both sides. So two equals A. And so what happens is we're gonna take that two and we just substitute it back into that original factored intercept form equation. So our final answer is y equals 2x plus 5x minus 3. Okay? All right, so from here, um, I'm going to actually do vertex form. So we get y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So we know our vertex. Remember, this is h and k. So in our parentheses, we're going to take the opposite of h. So if h is negative 1, we're going to write x plus 1. And k is the same, so it'll still stay negative 32, so it looks like minus 32. Now, a has to do with the vertical stretch and compression. We actually already found a. 
If we would have started with vertex 4, then I'd do the same thing and I'd plug in that 0, negative 30 for x and y, and we could solve for a. But a is going to be the same. So the process wouldn't be any different. We would just have to solve this equation for a as well. So a is 2. And then everything is in vertex form. So that one's done. Okay, like I said, if you did vertex form first, then you would have to plug in your point, just like we did on intercept form, and find the a value. All right, so standard form. Um, honestly, if we have all of this written, we can use that uh, to simplify. So we have two different versions. I'll show you the version using work that we already have. So if I have y equals 2, x plus 5, x minus 3, then we can go ahead and simplify. We're going to leave the 2 alone, and we're going to multiply FOIL like we did in unit 1 and 2. So x times x, x times negative 3, positive 5 times x, and positive 5 times negative 3. So when you multiply two factors, you should get four terms inside. So we're going to combine like terms. I still have that 2 because we haven't used it yet, but we can combine these x's. So x squared, negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2, minus 15. So our last step is to actually distribute the 2. So y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 30. Okay, so notice our a value is 2, a value is 2, a value is 2. Nothing else really looks the same, but if I did plug in 0, I would get negative 30, and that's on our graph. So all of these equations look different, but they are all the same graph. They're just different forms. So then what's going to happen is I'm going to give you a graph, and then you get to pick. So it really depends on the information that you have, which one's probably going to be easier. So I'll kind of talk you through that. So if we look at example four, I can write a quadratic equation in any form. So I have to look, and I see, okay, I do have my vertex. I know that that's at 3, negative 4. And my roots, ooh, I don't have my roots because it's not crossing right at 6, and it's not crossing right at 0. So what that means is since I don't have my roots, I don't have my roots, which means I don't want to use my intercept form. Okay, so then I know if I have, I can find a point off the graph. So you got to find out where it crosses exactly. So let's see, I know right here. So that's at 5, negative 2. It also would have crossed here, so I could have used that point as well. It doesn't matter, as long as you can find one point, and that's actually the only point that is nice. So I like to use vertex form, okay? So right here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put it y equals ax minus h plus k. And then we know x, since that's 3, it's going to be minus 3. And that's minus 4, so that stays the same, okay? So now I'll show you how to do it because we don't know what a is yet. But we do know both of these points. So you're going to pick one. I'm just going to pick 5, negative 2. So x is 5 and y is negative 2. So we'll substitute y is negative 2. We don't know a. And x is 5. OK. Now, this one, because we have this minus 4 at the end, I'm going to want to clean this up first. So I get negative 2 equals a times, well, 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that actually becomes 4a minus that 4 at the end. Okay. So to solve this, we're going to add 4. So 2 equals 4a. And then we'll divide by 4. So we get 2 fourths, which is actually equal to 1 half. 
So our final equation is y equals 1 half x minus 3 minus 4. Okay? Not super fast. And there's definitely work to show. Okay? But come on a Zoom and I'll help you. All right, let's look at example number 5. Same thing, I have the vertex, so our vertex is at negative 1, 4. Uh, this time I have the roots, and I have a point, so I can do what I just did over there. So if you want to do um, vertex form, we can. Or, but now I actually have the roots, so I can use the intercept form. I say that earlier? I don't know, vertex form or intercept form. So you really get to pick either one. So either intercept form or vertex form. It's a choice. I'll just go ahead and show you again how to do the, the one with the roots. So we get y equals a and then our factors. So if I know negative 3 is a root, I'm going to have x plus 3 as a factor. And if positive 1 is a root, I'm going to have x minus 1. Now, I can use any of these points. I like to use zero when I can. So I know this point right here, I've got zero, three. So I could have used my vertex, but I just picked zero, three. So y is three, I don't know a, and x is zero. These I can multiply together, so I get 3 equals a times, well, that's 3 times negative 1, which is negative 3, so then we'll divide by negative 3. So a equals negative 1, and it should be negative because remember my parabola opens down. So our final answer, I'm going to put my a back in here, is negative 1, x plus 3, x minus 1, okay? But like I said, if you want to do this in the other form, you're welcome to do that as well. All right, my last example six says determine a quadratic equation. I know I have a maximum at 210. I just like to graph it to get an idea. And let's say that's 10. So that's my maximum. And it goes through 1, 8. So that means it opens down, okay? Well, since I have a vertex and I have a point, I'm going to pick vertex form. I do typically do standard form as a last resort. The other two are just more quicker, user-friendly, whatever. So y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So we know our vertex is right here. So I get x minus 2 and then the 10 stays positive. And then I know this point, so that's x, that's y. So y is 8, I don't know a, and x is 1. Uh, when you type this into a calculator, make sure you use the parentheses, okay? So I get 8 equals, well, negative 1 squared, when we type that in, is going to be positive 1. So I get 1a and then that plus 10. You're not allowed to add the 10 because those are being stuck together, okay? So now we're gonna solve this equation. We'll subtract 10, so negative two equals one a, and if we divide by one, we get the same thing. So a equals negative two, and a should be negative because our parabola opened down. So then we'll go ahead and substitute our a back in. So y equals negative two, x minus two squared plus 10. All right, so on your assignment, I give you some to pick from, and I want you to try four, okay? So there's three graphs, writing any equation, and then I give you some information. So go ahead and give those a try, and let me know if you have questions.